All right, good day, everybody. Uh, it's August 9th, 2023, and today's edition of the Living in Place Institute Community Forum. We have two wonderful uh, presenters today, uh, Scott Stevenson of Hunter Douglas and Donald West of Panasonic HVAC. Um, always like to, uh, this, this presentation will be, is being recorded right now, and it'll be on our website within seven days. Um, I'm the moderator today. I'll hopefully help uh, answer some questions or pose questions and moderate us through the process. Um, always have our, our ground rules, our forum rules, basically just play nice in here. We want everybody to enjoy being part of the experience uh, and be inclusive of everybody. So, uh, Scott, it's all yours. All right. Thanks, Lloyd. Um, so, yeah, uh, as Lloyd said, my name is Scott Stevenson. I am um, Senior Director of Product. Uh, there, if you want to the slide at the end. And as well. I think you may have froze up there a little bit, Scott. Oh, did you say I froze? Yeah, you froze Hello? up there. Me. All right. All right. Am I coming in okay now? Uh, yes. freezing. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my video. Hmm. Maybe me right now. I'm trying to turn my video off. Okay. Let's try that. Go ahead, Scott. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh you can go ahead to the next slide. Okay. Um, yeah, just really briefly, who is Hunter Douglas? We are the the global leader in custom window coverings. We've actually been around for well over 100 years now. I think it's 103 or 104 at this point. Uh, we're about a $4 billion company with over 20,000 employees uh, worldwide. Uh, we actually operate under quite a few brands. Um, you know, for those in North America, you know, Hunter Douglas is, is certainly the brand you're going to be most familiar with. Um, but we we own a lot of other brands in other parts of the world. Uh, Luxaflex would be the, the premium brand. Um, but then there are brands that, that we utilize as well that are more like um, trade brands or um, direct to consumer like uh, we own three day blinds. Uh, there's Alto, which is you know not really something that most consumers would would know about, but uh, we, we, you know we, we kind of cover the the gamut of the of of price range and positioning and where you can buy stuff. But but in North America, at least Hunter Douglas is is the premium brand, and is really exclusively sold through. Uh, you know, a, a network of independent dealers. Um, those might be specifically nothing but window covering dealers, or they might be custom integrators, or they might be, you know, a, a, like a, some something that also does some other kind of decor, like maybe paint or flooring or furniture or stuff like that. Next slide. And then what I you know really want to talk about is, is PowerView Automation. So PowerView is the um, is the brand name for the uh, Hunter Douglas Automated Shade System. Uh, it's available in well over twenty shade styles. And you know one of the nice things, and, and we'll get into the why this matters, but there's a lot of different control options. So you can schedule your shades. Um, you know the vast majority of, of my PowerView shades at home just run on a schedule. They open in the morning, they close in the evening, and I don't even interact with them. Um, but of course, we also have remotes. You can see our our uh, array of Pebble remotes there on the right. Uh, we do have our app you know, for iPhones and Android phones. 
Um, you can also use voice control, which of course could be you know very important uh, for certain living in place type situations. And then of course we also integrate with a lot of you know a lot of the, the major home automation systems. Um, you know whether that be Control Four or uh, Crestron or you know Swan or anything like that. Go ahead. All right. What I really wanted to, to dive into then is the, you know, what are the benefits of automated window coverings? And it's kind of interesting when, you know, like if I am giving a presentation just to a, a you know, a general audience of, you know, why would anybody care about uh, having their, their, you know, window shades just be able to, to be motorized and move automatically. Yeah, these are the four benefits that I, I talk about to really any audience, but, but I think that that for the living in place type situation, each one of these benefits really does get amplified to a degree. So I'll, I'll go through each one of them a little bit. I'll if you want to go to the next slide. Um, the first one is convenience. And, you know, honestly, for, you know, most people, this is probably the biggest the driver. Um, but you can imagine if you are, you know, in a living in place type scenario, um, you know, manually opening and closing your shades every day is a royal pain. Um, not only is it time consuming, but it can be pretty challenging um, if you have mobility issues, if you have, you know, a hard time gripping things, uh, if, if you have arthritis or, or limited arm and hand strength, you know, grabbing onto shade cords or, or doing anything like that, um, or even just getting around the house to to open and close the shades can, can be a real challenge. And as you can imagine, what happens in a lot of cases is people don't. Uh, if if they if they have manual shades, it's just not worth it to them to to you know make that trip around the house every day, you know, opening the shades in the morning and and closing them in the evening. And so they they either stay closed or they stay open. Um, neither of which, which is, is really great, um, which, which kind of leads then to the, the next, um, the next benefit, if you want to jump to the next slide. So security and privacy. I mean, th this is, a, I think, a huge one for, you know, really for everybody, but certainly, um, you know, let's, you know, think about somebody like, you know, an, an older person living at home, uh, maybe by themselves at this point. Um, you know, uh, security and privacy are going to be very important to them. Uh, and automated shades can do an amazing thing to help with this. First of all, you can just, you know, you can schedule your shades to close automatically at sunset, which really, you know, avoids that fishbowl effect. You're not going to have that situation where, you know, it it, it gets dark, uh, you know, think about in the wintertime, all of a sudden it's dark at five o'clock and you turn on the lights and now the entire neighborhood can can look in on you. If your shades just closed automatically at sunset, you, you get to avoid that whole thing. Uh, another thing is that shades that, that are moving on a schedule give the appearance that someone's home, whether they are or aren't. Uh, so, you know, it, it definitely makes makes the home um, seem active and, and lived in. And then there's also you know different shade styles that can help with privacy. And you can see like the picture on the right there shows the, um, some top top down bottom up shades where you can lower them down, uh, you know from the top, you know bring light into the room, um, but still have have plenty of privacy. Um, shears are another uh, shear shades are another great one where um, the the shear uh, during the daytime especially makes it so that, you know, it pretty much anybody outside is just going to see shadows on the inside, um, and then they can close up fully at night. Uh, so again, security and privacy is, is another important one. Um, oh, uh, so Mary asked, is there a backup when there are power outages? Uh, Mary, the vast majority of our shades are actually battery powered. Um, now you, you can hardwire them certainly in a lot, you know, in a new construction type environment, it's great to do so because then you're not, uh, you're not worried about having to change the batteries, but in, in most cases, uh, they actually are, are battery powered and then, um, they can, and, and in most cases it's, it's rechargeable batteries, so they can just be recharged, uh, right in, right, right in spot. Uh, okay. 
the um the next thing that i wanted to get into is comfort and, and you know i really in this case define this as it's the the right amount of light and the quality of light at the right time uh and, and you think about back to what i said before about a lot of people not you know especially you know like take somebody who's you know, older or maybe disabled, and it just becomes, it's just not worth it to go around the house every day and open and close the shades. Well, what happens is either the, you know, maybe the shade stays closed all the time. So it's just dark. Uh, the, the house is just dark. And, and natural light is really important to health and well-being um, and wellness. There, there's, there's a huge amount of benefit that we get from having natural light um, coming in. And if your shades are closed all the time, that's, that's a real problem, especially if you are spending, you know, the vast majority of your time inside your home. Uh, and then the, you know, the, you know, the opposite of course, is that if you're leaving the, the shades open all of the time, then you're going to get really bright, harsh light at certain times of day, certainly. Uh, and, and then that also affects the, the temperature of the home. Um, you know, it, if, you're, if you've got, uh, if you live in, say, Arizona this summer, and you've got that afternoon sun uh, beating in on a, you know, open window, it's, it's definitely going to significantly raise the temperature of the home. And then, you know, same thing with, with regards to, to cold as well. So, so shades can, can really help regulate the temperature. And so between the light and the, and the temperature shades, you know, having the shades in the right position at the right time of day uh, can really improve your comfort of being in the home. Next slide. And then the, the last one is, is energy savings. Um, and again, you know, if, if somebody is, is, uh, is living in place, they, they, you know, saving money on their energy bill might be very important to them. And windows actually represent the largest source of energy loss in a home. Um, you figure your, your walls are nicely insulated, and then we've got these windows that even if they're double pane and whatever else, compared to the walls, they're, they're nothing. Um, and window coverings can, can really be effective at keeping out the cold in the winter. Um, so, you know, if you've got north facing, uh, north facing windows in the winter time, um, you can close those shades and ha or have them just close automatically. And it, it helps to keep that cold out. And then likewise, like I talked about before, um, you know, in the summertime, uh, on those west facing windows or the south facing windows, it's it's really nice to just have the shades close automatically in the afternoon to to block out that hot sun. So again, the the automation really ensures that the the shades are are in the correct position to maximize the energy efficiency. Next. So I really wanted to just um, conclude here with, uh, I'll call it a tale of two parents, but I, I always think it, it helps to kind of personalize things. Uh, and I'm, so I'm going to talk about my parents uh, and then my, my father-in-law. These are not their actual pictures, they're <laughs> stock photos, but, uh, but, but the scenario that I'm going to present is real. So, so my parents, um, my, my mom has MS has had for, I, I don't know, probably getting on 25 years. Uh, she's in her mid eighties now. Um, and, you know, several years ago, I was able to get them some automated shades uh, for their uh, kind of main living room area uh, on a, a sliding glass door, as well as the bedrooms. And so for my mom, you know, it's, it's really great. She obviously has limited mobility for her to, you know, get up in the morning to, you know, go open the shades in the bedroom, you know, was becoming really difficult. And um, likewise, you know, in the, in the afternoons when the, the sun would come around and hit that, uh, that, that living room sliding glass door, uh, where she'd be sitting on the couch trying to watch TV or read, then, you know, she, previously she would have had to get up and, you know, get up, get her walker, go around on the backside of the couch where there were cords and trip hazards and stuff and, and try and close that shade. And, you know, and as a result, it, it, it stayed closed most of the time. And likewise, the, the bedroom shades, you know, they ended up not, um, 
not getting opened in, in the morning. Um, now with with having those automated shades, um, she loves the fact that in the morning when she wakes up, she can just uh, hit the remote, you know, grab the remote, open the shades, brings the natural light in, um, you know, helps her wake up. And, um, you know, the same thing for my dad. He actually just had uh, had knee replacement surgery in February. And so that was really nice for him. Uh, and then, you know, same thing in the, in the afternoon. She doesn't have to worry about getting up and, and closing that uh, that shade on the slider. It just closes automatically. And then likewise, the bedroom shades close, you know, a little after sunset. So when she walks in there after dark, um, you know, the neighbors aren't looking in. Uh, so, you know, it's made a, a definite impact on their lives. Um, my father-in-law, uh, who lives by himself, um, my, my mother-in-law died about 10 years ago now. Uh, you know, he, I've offered, he hasn't been willing to take me up on the offer of, of automated shades. Uh, and when we do go visit him, the, the shades are closed all the time. Um, it's, it's A, it's not worth it to him to, you know, go around and, you know, open and close them every day. And then also, you know, it's an older house, the windows aren't well insulated. So he does, you know, so he keeps them especially closed in the winter time to, to keep the cold out. Uh, but even, you know, if the sun is streaming in, he's, he doesn't go and, 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 you know, raise them up to try and, you know, help them help that sun warm things up in there. Cause it's, again, it's just, it's too much of an effort for him. But as a result that that house is dark, um, he, you know, he rarely you know, unless he goes out um, to run an errand or something, he's not getting any natural daylight. And, and I think it definitely impacts things. It impacts his mood and impacts the, the, the way that he lives. And, and I think it makes a huge difference uh, in, the, the, in the lifestyle of, of these two sets of parents. So um, just, uh, you know, hopefully that kind of personalizes a little bit the the benefits of, of what automated shades can really do for, for people who are actually living in place. And I think that's my last slide. So, so a couple slide. of questions for you. You, you, oops, you, you can hear me, I hope. A um, couple yep. of questions. Uh, one is, okay, for existing homes, you say you can power this by battery. How does the battery get charged? Yep. Yeah, um, so there's we we offer two different um, rechargeable operating systems, if you will. One of them is uh, a rechargeable wand, um, and think of this like a uh, like a cordless drill, where you just swap them in and out. So you keep one on the charger, and uh, then when the when the the battery that's on up on the shade dies, you just pull it out and. Um, and then, uh, you know, put the, the charged one in and you drop the old one on the charger and then you got a, a fresh one ready to go. The other option is what we call an internal rechargeable where the battery, the lithium ion battery is inside the shade itself. And then there's a magnetic charging port. Um, this is really great for, uh, especially, you know, if it's somebody who uh, maybe is in a, a wheelchair or, um, or, you know, certainly maybe doesn't want to be climbing on a ladder uh, where we've got a, a cable that goes up and it, and it magnetically attaches to the shade and starts charging it. The nice thing there is you can use just a standard like painter's extension pole. And we've got a little attachment that goes on the end of that pole that allows you to grab uh, it basically holds on to that charging adapter and lets you get it up close to the shade. And then the magnet, you know, those magnets really just kind of suck it into place. So uh, approximately on the, the batteries, how, how many up downs can it, can it do before it needs to be recharged? Yeah. Um, good question. Uh, we typically say that you're going to get about a year's life. Uh, you know, it's going to depend on the shade size uh, and how many times a day you're you're operating it that that year is is kind of assuming one you know one open each day and one close each day. Um, but you know, like I've got I certainly have some that have gone at least sixteen months without needing to be charged. Um, but you know, if you've got a, a shade that's yeah you know, sixteen feet high, that's that's obviously the motor running a long time each day. So then you know you might you know be looking at more like ten or eleven months. And so for, for new construction, what, what do you recommend doing for that? 
Um, so for new construction, I would definitely recommend wiring um, because then you're not you're not worrying about the batteries at all, and the, and they're just gonna gonna work. Um, and and it, you know it's it's low voltage wire. Uh, it's it's pretty you know it would be a pretty standard thing to deal with. You just pull the you know pull the cable to the upper right corner of the window, uh, and that that means you know that that just means you're not dealing with batteries at all. One of the other things that I like about shades, I mean, you you live here in Colorado, you know how intense the UV light is here, and the things, the damage that UV light can do to uh, fabrics and, and flooring and the like. I, I like the idea to be able to have it, you say, go up early, you know, have the shade go up early in the morning, and then when the sun becomes more intense, for it to come down on its own, uh, on a time schedule. Yeah. And yeah. Then the, yeah. Go ahead. De definitely um you know the and even like um i talked before about like the the sheer shadings that let you um you know, kind of let you see out but but prevent people from seeing in during the day those those kinds of shades still prevent about 95 percent of the uv light um so you're still letting light come in um but you're 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 blocking the uv from um from you know doing the kind of damage you were talking about so a couple of questions came up. One is from Terry is if it's wired, is there a backup when the power is out? Um, no, th that is, I guess, maybe the one downside of of hard wiring is that um, that you aren't going to be able to to operate the shades during a blackout. Uh, the what we there are um, there's like one of the shades that we sell for and that mostly goes on like a sliding glass door type of thing. Um, we do for that one in particular make it dual operation where you can just uh, you know grab it and and move it um, because of that that scenario where you might need to get out. But for the most part, yeah, if, if it's hardwired, then then you do not have a backup if the power is out. And then there's a question, I don't know, I don't know if it was similar to my question I asked about how, how long do, do the batteries last, but the question from Mary is, is there a life to the batteries? And I'm, I'm going to put it like expectancy, like how long do the batteries actually last you have before you have to replace the battery by a new one because it's, it's lost its capability to hold charge. Yeah, the, um, we've we've tested our rechargeable batteries that they, they will last up to 500 charge cycles. And if you figure you're getting about a year's worth of each charge cycle, um, that's a long time. <laughs> All right. And then uh, uh, Karen has a question about does Hunter Douglas train people to repair their your blinds? Yeah, I mean, we, we definitely have, um, you know, authorized repair centers all over the country um that that can do the vast majority of repairs uh and then we also you know have some um some facility you know at our like fabrication facilities across the country we have some more advanced ones if it if it's something that a you know one of the local ones can't handle but the local the local ones can handle the vast majority of things uh, and i'm gonna if people want to get a hold of you i either write down his email address here or take a screenshot because uh, he's he's a great resource for you. The other thing that I like about motorized shades, being a a former child hoover, is the safety aspect of really there's no cords. I mean, it's it's I can't tell you how many times I've had to deal with clients that child wrapped the cord around their head or got them caught between it in regards to a continuous cord. Um, I like the idea of having the safety aspect. I know. I think all your slot, all your your window coverings now, are are more child friendly from a CPSC standpoint. That being the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Yeah, I mean, there's there's um, you know a lot of rules in place for um, child safety with regards to to window coverings. The and but to, to your point, you know, certainly one of the nice things about an automated one is there are no operating cords at all. Uh, and so there, there's there's not something that somebody is you know that you know a, a, a child or um, something like that is going to get their head twisted around. And then last uh, question, <laughs> wait, go ahead. Yeah, I, I so I saw it come up. Best methods for cleaning silhouette blinds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> um, I actually should know that probably because I have them. But uh, we do. If you go to help.hunterdouglas.com. Um, 
There are uh, what we call IOCs, uh, in, their um, installation, operation, and care guides. And if you look up the one for Silhouette, it'll have the instructions for cleaning silhouettes. Cool. Well, Scott, thank you. Uh, appreciate your time today. And if you want to stay on board and listen to Donald's presentation, yeah. we usually have an open sort of Q&A at that point in time with other questions that come up. So right. thank you again. We'll stick on. Thanks. Appreciate everybody's time. All right, Donald, it's all yours. Thanks, Louie. Um, I'm not seeing the screen though. Hang on. Scott, you I were am. able to see the screen, right? Yep. Yep. I, I right, see the you. slide. You have multiple computer screens? Yeah, just give me one second. Well, the first screen is your contact information, which is great. Okay. All right, I, I have it. So the uh, first of all, thank you, Louie, for uh, inviting uh, inviting us to uh, to join this this uh, this group. Um, I'm Don West, product manager for uh, for Panasonic. Uh, brief introduction of Panasonic, if uh, if you haven't heard of it, uh, global company. Uh, we are part of Panasonic Eco Solutions. Our uh, business unit focuses on indoor air quality. Uh, we are ventilation specialists uh, and based out of Newark. Uh, and uh, anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to reach out, uh, you know, either during or after the, the call, if you want to go to the next slide. Uh, just what we're going to talk about today on the intro, uh, the uh, the importance of indoor air quality. Uh, we'll talk about the Panasonic products that uh, that we're going to be uh, working with, Swidget products, which we've partnered with, uh, which are part of the controls that control uh, our Panasonic products. Uh, the combination of Panasonic and Swidget combined, and as and as we integrate into the features of a living in place certified home. So talking about the importance of indoor air quality, uh, big concern, you know, we just had those wildfires and, and still going on uh, in, in Canada. You know, it is a number one concern of homeowners when it comes to a, a healthy home. You know, poor indoor air quality, fourth biggest environmental threat in the U.S. And, you know, new homes being built, very tightly, uh, tightly built. My home was built back in 1969, so very leaky. Uh, so the the converse to that newly built homes very tight unfortunately what happens is they'll trap bad air in unless they uh, unless they're able to breathe so it it does create that that need for better ventilation and people spending time at home now even before covid uh people spending a, a large amount of time at home 90 percent and whether it's when they say indoors you know that's home that's work that's in the car those pollutants can build up. Uh, they're two to five times worse than the outside air normally. Um, people living in place, they are going to be uh, in the same environment for an extended period. So they may only be in the home for for uh, for maybe ninety five percent of the time, rather than um, rather than in a car or 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 at work. So again, uh, uh, creating a big need for quality indoor air quality. Go ahead. So talking about uh, some of the Panasonic products that we're going to be working with for the project um, are Whisper Green Select. A uh, couple key aspects of this. This is our bath premier bathroom fan. Uh, comes in a number of styles. Uh, the, the styles that we're referencing here, uh, you have a variety of, of uh, CFM range. So the amount of air it can expel from the bathroom. Uh, there's two models and you can actually select either 50, 80 or 110 uh, for the smaller model. And then the larger model, uh, it can go from 110 to 130 to 150. So there's a selector in there. And this gives you the flexibility of having that constant run speed uh, at whatever, whatever you need to select. And the, the motors in these are very quiet. 
they're DC motors, so they don't use a lot of power. Uh, as you can see by the Energy Star uh, rating that we that we achieve with this, um, again, very quiet. Uh, it was it was astonishing when I went from and you know the original fan that was in my bathroom, which you turn on and it just you just hear it kind of rattle around and it's just making noise. Meanwhile, the bathroom is uh, you know filling up with uh, humid air and. Uh, you know, uh, covering the mirrors and the and the windows, the we put the whisper green in, and you don't hear the fan, and there's no condensation on the mirrors. There's no condensation on the on the windows. So huge advantage, very quiet, very effective. Um, from the builder side of this, just a, a little note for for builders working with these, the flexi fast bracket. This makes it really easy to put in. Um, once this bracket is screwed into place, the uh, the uh, the fan basically snaps in. It's it's very easy to do, and uh, really is quite a time saver. And uh, with with construction, time is money. And uh, with all of our DC products, uh, the six year uh, six years on the motor. Uh, I just saw a warranty parts only, or parts and labor. I believe it's parts only. And then three years on the other uh, components. Uh, sorry, one other one other aspect of if you want to sorry if you want to just jump back. Sorry about that, Louis. Okay. Um, the uh, the motors they're, they're DC motors, but they also have smart flow technology, and this is a, very important. Um, as as um, duct work can uh, tends to be complicated above the ceiling. Uh, the more complicated it is, the more static pressure can build up, and that that will reduce the amount of air uh, that a fan can expel. Um, our motors will actually ramp up when they when they detect that static pressure to achieve the CFM that they're actually rated for, and that's uh, and that's performance that that's you know uh, that uh, alternate uh, alternate fans may not achieve because they don't have that quality. Okay, now we can move to the next. So before so you move on, I sure. have a couple, couple of questions. I'm gonna go backwards. Um, how, where is the, the switch that allows you to change the CFM? Where's that located? So when you re, if you remove the grill, there's a there's a uh, a slide switch that's uh, right under the grill. So it's it's something that you set at installation that you can change, but you have to remove the grill. Okay, and what are these like for doing a retrofit in an existing home? Uh, it that all depends on the on the, how much space you have. Now these are fairly uh, fairly short, uh, or very uh, or, or not as deep uh, can size. I was able to do it in my older home because I had a uh, I had I had a decent amount of space in the attic. Um, if there are if you are very limited for for space in the attic or uh, or overhead, um, we do have narrower fans that uh, that can fit the bill. Great, thank you. No problem. Um, before we talk about the next product, I want to talk about what it is. Um, not sure you know if everybody's heard of an energy recovery ventilator, but uh, on the screen, uh, you know, what is an energy recovery ventilator? We'll call it an ERV for short. Uh, this is a device, it gives you balanced ventilation. So we were talking earlier about the, um, the, the air being trapped in a, in a newer built home. These, this is the product that will make your, uh, this, this will make your home breathe. So this, is the, this becomes the lungs of your home. Air is coming in and air is going out. And when it does that, um, you know, the, the bullet points is, you know, it transfers heat and moisture between the incoming fresh filtered air and the outgoing stale air. And the same thing is uh, in the in the summer. It will, you know, during the summer months, it maintains cool, dry air, even though it's bringing in hotter air. As it crosses through that core, as you see in the, uh, in the, in the crossover, that the temperature and moisture is exchanged in that core without having the air combine. It's uh, so it's basically transferring heat and uh, and heat energy, cool energy, and moisture through that core. Um, the actual picture of the product is underneath the uh, underneath the, the the diagram. 
And again, this is a, this is a product that enables your home to breathe, um, filtering the air coming in. If we wanna to go to the next slide. So uh, many bullet points about the product. Um, the important thing to remember about this, it's the lungs of your home. Uh, this particular product, the IntelliBalance 100, uh, goes up to 100 CFM. The, uh, there's two motors inside, two of those uh, same DC motors that we were talking about earlier uh, with the smart flow technology. So if you think a duct work can get complicated with a bathroom fan, it can get even more complicated with an ERV. And, um, and with smart flow technology, you're, it, it assures you that it will, it will get the CFM that you dial in. Um, similar to the, um, similar to the ERVs or similar to the uh, uh, Whisper Green, it does have a, a pick a flow sensor or pick a flow selector rather. Uh, so you, if you don't want to run it at 100 CFM, many many uh, many choices are running it at 60 CFM. And then this one also has a boost function, uh, which will enable it to go up to 100 CFM, uh, either on demand or automated, which we'll look at in a minute. The, um, and we talked about filtered air. This, will, this has a MERV 8, and it also has a MERV 13 available. Uh, so that incoming air is filtered before it even comes through the core and exchanges the, uh, the temperature and, uh, and moisture. So this is, uh, uh, again, a, uh, you're bre it's breathing, but it's also breathing through a, a filter. So that is a, that's a, a positive note. Uh, six year warranty on this as well, uh, and three years on the other parts. Uh, oh, awesome. A bunch Go of ahead. questions come in, but I, I they they went away. So if you want to, uh, the question that came in thus far was the one about how quiet they are. Um, this is from Scott. He had actually installed these in his home. Uh, because the one sounded like jet engines. <laughs> I get it. Uh, with these, you can barely hear them. Um, question for you is how often should one replace the MERV filters? That uh, depends on where you are. Um, it, uh, this actually has an automated um, uh, an automated counter that will, I believe it's three months. Um, but again, it depends on uh, depends on where you're where you're located. So uh, if you're in an area that that has, is more prone to a lot of pollen and and dust particles, of course, you're going to change it. Uh, you're going to change it at that three months. Um, you can go up to six months as well. It really, it really is going to to depend. But it does have an automatic um, uh, uh, beeper that will let you know uh, when when uh, the the timer is up. Oh, I'm going to go back one slide. Is is sure. this the filter you're talking about right here? It's in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, that's the oh, intake. Here. Yep. But so I, just, it, I'm sorry. I can't see the, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I couldn't see. I, I'm still having trouble seeing, but the uh, the um, in the bottom left corner, that is where the air uh, comes in, and the there's a small filter. That's the that's the MERV eight or the MERV thirteen, and that's where it filters it. Got it. And how easy is it to replace that? Uh, the there's a uh, as you see in this picture, there's uh, four four clamps, um, or is it two clamps? Uh, the, the, the door just opens up. The other picture has it with the door off, which is also very easy. You don't have to take the door off. It just opens up. You slide that little filter out. You put the new one in. It takes five minutes, not All even. Right. So, so Karen has a question. Are, are ERVs only suitable for airtight homes? Uh, no, they are. You can you can use an ERV in in any type home. They're more effective in airtight homes because they're going to be you know again acting as the lungs of your house. Um, but you can use it in it, you know in in my leaky home I do have one. Uh, however, it's a you know the effectiveness is much better in a in a tighter home. Sorry, we're on the switch of the page. Oh, okay. So. Um, talking about uh, the Swidget devices, uh, Panasonic has partnered with Swidget. Uh, Swidget, uh, just to just taking a look, that's the entire family of Swidget. 
Um, they are a future-proof uh, smart device. And what does that mean? Um, the Right now, these are uh, Wi-Fi based. And uh, by future-proofing it, uh, the there's going to be whatever protocol comes out. You know, there's Z-Wave, there's Zigbee. Um, there's a number of protocols. Uh, you replace the insert and that brings you up to date into whatever the new uh, protocol du jour is. <clears throat> right now, Wi-Fi 2.4. Um, and uh, so basically you select your device, whether it's the switch or the, um, or the uh, outlet. And then there are the inserts, which have a variety of functions from indoor air quality to uh, USB charging, um, uh, night lights, stuff like that. Um, but there's a variety and all of them will control whatever that whatever your device is hooked to. So they're all Wi-Fi control and then they have their own uh, individual functions. I go to the next and then we've got so this is uh, <clears throat> this is the 204060 timer. So uh, as you can see on the uh, on the switch, it's got you know it's got little LEDs that light up as you touch it. So you touch it once, the one LED lights up, it will turn on whatever it's connected to. So uh, for 20 minutes, and then you got a 20, a 40, a 60, and then uh, you press it, you press it again, it's just, it's constant on. And this is, uh, this has a couple of neat features, one of which is the, uh, it's got dry contacts. So, you know, low voltage that, um, that we are using to turn on our uh, Whisper Green, and, uh, and also we'll talk, we'll see that in a little bit. This is going to be, uh, and this is ideal for the bathroom and uh, and for uh, controlling the ERV uh, boost function. Uh, this is, uh, and you can see it doesn't have an insert in it right there that's open. So we have to choose our insert in a little bit. So this, uh, again, this is ideal for Whisper Greens, ERVs, uh, uh, and bathroom applications. I'm going to go to the next. So there's a question here. Uh, oh, again, similar one on, on sure. is there backup power uh, for outages? No, there, unfortunately, there's no backup for these. I'm going to guess that this all ties into your HVAC system anyway. So you're, you're, if you're out, your your HVAC is out too. Correct. And then uh, does Panasonic have fans specifically for high-rise condo applications? That are fairly old. And again, yes, we do. Um, we've got a number of retro, uh, you know, uh, uh, retrofit uh, uh, fans. Uh, again, we have the uh, what's called the Whisper Value. Um, it's that's the one that's really narrow. So if you have a, a, a if you're uh, confined by how much space you have, um, that's one that that can definitely work. Um, and we do have we have quite a range of products uh, with regards to uh, to renovation. And then Debbie, as a follow on question to that, are, are the fans rated for commercial use? Well, when you say commercial use, um, they're rated for the CFM that they are rated for. So if the commercial use is 110 CFM for uh, for a bathroom, then certainly it's going to depend on the code and what the CFM is. All right. Okay. Uh, moving to the auxiliary switch. So uh, this this is um, essentially the same switch as the twenty forty sixty. Just doesn't have a timer function. Has those same dry contacts, and we're going to be using this uh, for the on off standby for the uh, for the ERV. So this is a this is a switch that can be utilized for the um, the standby function of an ERV. You can use it in a bathroom but it only has the on off function. It doesn't have a timer. So um, can be used for either. And now we look at the combination. So this is, this is the ideal setup for, uh, for a bathroom. Uh, we have our uh, 204060 with, our, with a temp humidity motion sensor in it. So you see the little round, uh, uh, round piece on the insert above. That is the motion sensor, and then it has the little grill work. That's your temperature and humidity um, sensor. So 
this is great for, and this is what I have in my bathroom with the 20, 40, 60. Um, you know, you, somebody walks in, it automatically turns the fan on. If um, somebody leaves after a shower, the uh, the temperature or the uh, the humidity sensor will automatically keep the fan on until it reaches a, a lower level of humidity. So um, whether somebody's in there or not, it it detects what the air quality is and will activate the fan accordingly. Um, and of course, there's always manual operation. You can always just hit the fan button and uh, it will turn on. But the you know having a having it uh, motion and temperature and humidity sensing capabilities does it for you so using going back to the 2040 60 yes what do you recommend for bathrooms this is this is a, this ongoing debate as to a bathroom that has a shower how long should the vent fan be on well if it's if we have this if we have the sensor it does it by itself uh it will automatically sense when that humidity lowers to a uh to a suitable um a suitable percentage you know, the ideal percentage is, uh, you know, 40 to 60 ish percent humidity. That's uh, that's the comfort range. And then that also helps prevent uh, mold and mildew buildup. All right. We have our indoor air quality insert. So we have this um, uh, with our with our 20, 40, 60 as well. So this uh, we will use with our. Uh, with our ERV. So located in a different part of the home, um, this uh, the, the indoor air quality insert not only detects uh, humidity and temperature, um, does not have a motion sensor, but in its place has a, uh, a VOC sensor. So um, VOCs are, um, that's stuff that off gases from your furniture, your flooring, you know, we try to select the uh, the best uh, with regards to um, uh, environmentally friendly products. There's there's usually going to be some off gassing. Um, also, cleaning products, general household cleaning products, will give off VOCs. Um, so, um, burnt cooking will give off some VOCs. So, what this will do, it will automatically detect. Uh, elevated VOCs, and you can see the chart on the right kind of gives you an idea of of, uh, of some of the numbers that are involved. And uh, what will happen is the uh, it, this will automatically boost your ERV to, so maybe it's running at 60, this will automatically boost it to 100. And, it, you know, it'll be uh, evacuating that air, bringing in fresh air from the outside. So um, this is ideal for use for the boost function of of the ERV. Let me go to the next. So um, pre-programmed or or sometimes we call it pre-baked uh, control insert modules. Um, the uh, Switchit uh, products will work uh, without using an app. Uh, they, they come preloaded when using a 204060 timer. So they will automatically do, uh, as you see there, motion. If motion is detected, it will turn on. If it's vacant for more than five minutes, it will turn off. And uh, same thing for humidity, increases 15%, decreases or returns to 15% of its historical, it will do that as well. Same thing with IAQ. So this is the uh, these are the pre-baked or pre-programmed rules that are automatically in it when you use a 20, 40, 60. Want to flip to the next? So, um, you know, we talked about the pre-baked. This is the um, this is the the full integration utilizing the Swidget app. Um, we have our products on the bottom. We have our switches on the top, our devices and our sensors on the top. And there's an app that uh, that ties into all these. <clears throat> you may or may not use the app, um, but using the app gives you. A lot more, uh, uh, a lot more flexibility and a lot more capability when tying everything together. So as you as you see, our 20, 40, 60 with the temp, humidity, motion, running the bathroom fans, it can also by using automations uh, turn on the ERVs as well. And same thing for the ERVs. If they uh, if we are if we have an activated ERV, we could also activate 
the bathroom fans as well to uh, to aid in evacuating um, bad air. Uh, just a quick screenshot to the left of the uh, of the uh, on the left of the screen is the uh, um, the uh, the application uh, and uh, this these products uh, and uh, all the Swidget apps are, are tied into and can be tied into Lex, Alexa or Google Assistant. My apologies if I just activated your Alexa at home. And if you want to just click through, uh, give it a quick click there, because I, I actually had a little, yeah, there you go. So, you know, we're talking about the features uh, of a of a living in place Institute certified home. You know, you know, we like to we like to look at our products and think that hey, they are accessible um, through an application or voice activated. Um, they're certainly healthy, bringing in fresh filtered air from the outside via a uh, via the ERV and uh, humid air being removed by the by the uh, Whisper Greens. Um, safe. The these are auto functions that keep indoor air quality at healthy levels. Uh, it's secure. The, the Swidget product uses uh, advanced security to protect devices and data. Uh, beautiful, the Swidget controls, modern design, um, state-of-the-art products. Uh, we They are functional. Uh, the fans and controls work in in uh, in unison. And finally, they're connected, the fans, the fans and the controls, uh, they talk to each other um, and and uh, we can make them talk to each other and they can activate each other as well. And that concludes, I believe, my presentation. Oh, well, there's a, another question for you. Um, sure. Karen, uh, is the temperature humidity uh, motion sensor or insert installed into the Swidget or in the Whisper Green fan here? Uh, in this case, we are installing it in the, uh, it's, it goes into the Swidget. Uh, we do have some options for Whisper Greens that have uh, uh, that have sensors as well, uh, but when you leverage the uh, when you leverage Swidget, you can make everything talk to each other. So the Swidget can be the switch, if you will, the device can not only be mounted on the wall, but say you have a steam room, and every time you open the door up, it there's a rush of of water vapor, moisture that comes out. You can even have those installed on the ceiling, the Swidget device. That's the actually that's the first time I've heard uh, for uh, an application like that. Um, it would have to be, I'd have to I'd have to get back to you on that one. I'm not all sure. Right. That's all right. Uh, I'll reach out to Swidget. Sounds good. So, uh, so again, if you any of you want to uh, connect with Don after this, uh, you can take a screenshot or just write down his information there. Um, so. Uh, we, if Don, if you want to, you can put it up in the chat too. So I'm going to move on here. All, All right. right. So the living in place idea home that's being constructed. All right. We're all backfilled except the garage area. It's been an incredibly wet three months here in Colorado, which is just unusual. You can even see the dark clouds behind the house here. Um, so all the framing, is, both internal and external, is done. Roof trusses obviously are in. Uh, sheathing along with a drop. The last words there, the roof is now sealed. It's got a membrane uh, all across it uh, in preparation for putting up the stone-coated steel roof sometime after stucco's done. Um, the next months, we should be finishing HVAC uh, and plumbing, and then starting rough electrical, um, smart technology wiring, and then solar panels, uh, and then the process keeps going on. You can see here, the the, that's going on in the house. This, this, what you see here is the supply lines. There's also return lines coming to it. It's it's a, really a different sort of circumstance today in regards to dealing with heat pumps. So, okay, upcoming forms. We're going to start all day forms. Next month, we're going to start at four with sun touch and leak defense, along with LK sinks. In October, we'll be back at 10 a.m., uh, with signature kitchen suite LG appliances, along with um, rec group solar panels. And then future community forum pr presentations include control for evoke flooring, the low living, and many others. And so we're going to be, for those of you who are going to be at CD Expo, which 
I know Scott, you're going to be there. Um, we are going to be there next month, the September 7th to 9th, uh, the Colorado Convention Center here in Denver. That's a great time of year to be here in Denver. We are in booth 936. Uh, we also have a smart stage presentation uh, with uh, obviously Scott, you're the part of that, along with Autoslide, Josh, and Swidget. Um, and if you want to, they can register for free for that, uh, for that show. Um, it's really the, the premier show for smart technology as to what's going on uh, in the marketplace. So with that, I'm going to close out today's presentation. Uh, I'll stay aboard for any other questions you may have, but I'm going to conclude the recording session here. Um, will the directory, okay, Ebony, yes, I, I'll, we are going to be adding that back to the web, Lippy website. We redesigned it. Now we're having to do some other things. So let me uh, close this out here. Uh, that's needed in 